All right, welcome back to the channel, amazing hackers. Now listen up and sit down because we're gonna talk about cross-site scripting. Make yourself comfortable, get yourself a coffee and maybe even a popcorn. And while you're at it, install an FTP client because you're gonna be hacking along with me at least if you want to. I'm gonna tell you when to pause this video and you're gonna build your own labs on my server. Now for this challenge I've built an FTP server. You guys can upload your files there. Everybody's gonna be using the exact same FTP account. Uh, don't mess with each other's files. There will be backups of course. You will be banned if you do that. And every night I will be removing those files through a cron job. So make sure that when you're testing that you actually save it locally as well because it might be removed by the cron job. Now the FTP connection that you want to make is through hexpert.com using the user training and the password test. So very simple, just go to hexpert.com training and then the password test. Now you're gonna be thrown into a directory here and in here you can either create your own directories or create a new file. And I'm going to create my new file. I'm gonna be making cheese.php and, and cheese .php. I'm gonna be creating some things. Now you can give it a name, doesn't really matter which one. Just make sure that you recognize it later on and that you're able to type it. Now. We're going to add some code in there as well. Uh, we're going to add this code in there. Now what I'm going to do is I already have that in rat.php. So I'm just going to open that on my local drive. That is, or at least let's going to, let's do this differently. I'm going to make a new file here on my local drive. Um, and I'm going to do that with BB edit. Just make a new file and then copy that code that we talked about, or at least that you saw in the PowerPoint. Let me flash that on screen real quick so you can pause the video, type this over into your file. I'm just gonna copy and paste it, but make sure that you replace this file name here, red.php. In my case, it's gonna be cheese.php. In your case, it's gonna be the name of the file that you're gonna give it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna save it as cheese.php and then I'm actually going to go through my documents wait for it to appear and upload it to the server that's going to override the file that was originally there but that's okay because then I can go actually on and go to hexpert.com and I can go to the slash training directory and in here in the training directory I can find that cheese.php as you can see, this is what I've created. And now you've built your own labs because this is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. I'm gonna give you a moment, pause the video, try to hack this, try to perform any type of cross-site scripting in here and see what happens. Now, if you pause the video, good, let's continue because in here, everything is possible. There's no real filter. It doesn't really, there's nothing stopping this from popping up. I'm using a very complicated one right now, um, at least decently complicated, but it can also make a very basic one. It doesn't really have to be anything that's, uh, that's that um, complicated. So that's that for the first file. Very easy, you can go there, you can try to hack it with reflected cross-site scripting, but anything will go in there. Now for the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of security because let's say we have a script tag, okay? I'm going to go back to BB edit here and I'm going to say we're going to remove that script tag. So I'm going to pop up the code on screen real quick again. Ooh, wrong there, there we go. As you can see here, echo string replace script with whatever. I'm going to do that as well on my file. So I'm going to do string replace. Uh, need to do that with an underscore, of course, string replace. And then I want to replace every instance of script with nothing in the get variable before I echo it out. So that's going to be my first filter that I put on. I'm going to upload this to the server again, and that's going to make it so that I can't perform the script tag attack anymore. So just basic script is not going to work here. As you can see, it gets filtered out. But then we come into kind of a different situation where if I capitalize anything in this script tag, it's not going to get filtered out. 
as you might be able to see. Uh, let's do the T here. There we go. I've already bypassed my filter. So we can, of course, put this to lower string. We can start filtering out other things like the image or the on error event handler. Um, we can do a lot of stuff there, but we're going to go move on to the next example. So um, we have, so these were some examples that we're going to bypass that script. Um, if you have put in an alert filter, you can go for confirm instead of alert. Um, these should be parentheses here, of course, but there's many different things possible there. Let's put them in. Let's put a pen in there. So you guys know what I'm talking about. These should be parentheses here. So confirm parentheses and that should pop up. Then we're going to add a different context to our attack that we're going to try. So again, pause the video, make a new file on the server. Um, and then copy over this, making sure that you replace this right here with your own file name, of course. Going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go over, going to go and make cheese with HTML tag PHP. Ooh, that's my name. <laughs> of course, there we go. Not .txt. There we go. And then I'm going to copy over that same code that we had before. So. As you can see here, going to remove this for now. So this is the code that we saw on screen right here. And of course, I'm going to have to replace cheese with HTML tag and it's like this. There we go. So now I've been able to create a different lab, which we're also going to try, of course. Um, if you want, you can go to your same location slash training and then it's cheese with HTML tag.php in my case. Um, and I've made a mistake, I can see, because I haven't even uploaded it yet. Because then we can grab it, we can throw it on FileZilla, and there we go. Now I should be able to access my file. And we do. In this case, I can submit, and I can see that my reflection is in an input field. Now let's look at this input field, shall we? Um, in this input field, what we have here is just our value being reflected. Uh, and it says value equals double quote Professor Snape right here. By the way, Professor Snape is a good friend of mine, Brandon. Really love him. Awesome guy. I can try to break out of this with using by using a double quote, for example. Now, that's not going to work in this case. And I'm going to, again, let you pause the video, try to attack something different here, try to do something different which will pop up your attack factor. Have you done that? Good, then we're going to move on because now we are going to see what will actually work. To do that, we need to go back to the labs right here and we can easily see why this isn't working. So if we magnify the code a little bit, if that's possible, even apparently not, I'm sorry about that, but I'll just, oh, there we go. My magnification is up here. 400%, let's do that so you guys can see what's going on. As you can see, the input value equals, and that's not a double quote, of course, this is a single quote. That means that my attack factor also needs to contain a single quote. And then I still need to break out of this HTML tag right here, so I can do that with my greater than sign. And then I can insert my attack factor in there and it will pop up. And you guys have just learned cross-site scripting into the HTML tag attribute context. Good job. Now we're going to add some security in here. And I, of, I sometimes refer to this as sort of like the killer of cross-site scripting attacks because it's really hard to get a cross-site scripting attack whenever this is applied. We're going to apply HTML entities, the function to that input that we had before. And then we're also going to upload that to the server again. And we're going to try and do the same thing that we did before with the single quote uh, to bypass it. That's in this case not going to work anymore because now the HTML entities, as you see, it kind of made a jumbly mess of things. And um, this makes it a lot harder to break out of the HTML tag attribute. 
So you guys have just added another filter in here. Um, and this filter is going to make it, like I said, a lot harder to break out. Now, nothing is impossible, of course, and especially if you start adding some parameters to the HTML entities function to make it um, do certain things. There's a really cool lab built by a uh, fan of mine on that. I'll link it in the description below. But uh, this is basically a different kind of filtering. And what I've been trying to teach you is that if you're trying to secure your code you can take the sleazy way out and you can try to do blacklist based filtering and that's going to it's not impossible of course but it's a lot harder because just one slip up one thing that you forget and the attacker can bypass it whereas if you take this approach it's going to be a lot harder and of course whitelist based filtering is also an option but in case of whitelist based filtering you're going to need to if you're going to write it yourself you're going to need to know exactly what you're doing you're going to write a regular expression pattern on things that are allowed but then an edge case comes up you need to write a new regular expression blah 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 you guys know how it goes in the company world it never stands still. I hope I taught you guys a valuable lesson today and I hope you guys can use this in the future as well. Thank you guys so much for all your support and watching and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.